Do you trust an algorithm with the power to launch nuclear weapons? I'm guessing your answer is probably not. Welcome to yet another episode of Bill Track 50 Beyond the Bill Number. I'm your host, Sarah, and with me to talk about the Block Nuclear Launch by Autonomous Artificial Intelligence Act of 2023 is Stephen. Stephen, how are you? Hi, Sarah. Uh, great to be here. Let's get down to the business. <laughs> Nuclear launching. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to start this topic this week, then, I think we do need to start by discussing the apocalypse, Armageddon, nuclear annihilation, uh, <laughs> whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, and the best way to start this, of course, is to talk about the classic 1983 movie War Games, where Matthew, <laughs> Matthew Broderick accidentally hacks into a NORAD supercomputer, almost triggering a nuclear holocaust. You know, sometimes when you make these references, I just smile in a way. Didn't War Games end with the supercomputer, kind of like iRobot? understanding that some scenarios have no winners and humanity is kind of a little bit messed up anyways and teaching us that, you know, certain games shouldn't be played by machines and some are best not played at all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a very good synopsis. Looking at today, it seems like Congress is heeding at least some of this lesson. And this Block Nuclear Launch by Autonomous Artificial Intelligence Act is making headlines right now. What's the core aim of this bill? Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely attracted some interest. We've got a lot of views uh, on Bill Track 50. And of course, you can read all about this by uh, looking at the blog uh, with links to all the bills that we'll talk about. Um, so uh, the bill aims to prevent AI from having the final say on nuclear launches. Uh, it prohibits the use of federal funds for launching a nuclear weapon via an uncontrolled autonomous weapon system, as it calls it, uh, and insists that humans must have meaningful control over such decisions. And this isn't the only legislation that's addressing new technology and weapon systems. Yes, there are. I mean, at Bill Track 50, we just introduced a similar bills feature where you can click a button uh, on any bill and it will show you all of the bills that are similar. So doing it on, on a bill like this one, which is quite an odd bill, uh, really produces some interesting results. So, for example, <laughs> you've got... Um, S1186 stroke HR669, uh, sort of companion bills, uh, which mandate that a preemptive nuclear strike can only be authorised if Congress has formally declared war, uh, which is interesting, and quite eye opening, really, because it presupposes that the president of the day, whoever that is, would be willing to launch a preemptive strike under any commitment circumstances. Um, so preemptive, obviously, is using nuclear weapons when they haven't been first used by the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, so again, let's let's see whether that one passes. Um, another <laughs> interesting one uh, is a New Hampshire bill, actually, actually, which is HB one five nine nine, which authorizes the use of autonomous AI for personal defense, uh, which sort of conjures all sorts of uh, Robocop scenarios into the in, into your mind. Uh, and I'm not sure that uh, New Hampshireites would be completely relaxed with the thoughts <laughs> of killer droll drones patrolling the streets. Uh, but, you know, who knows? You know, they were worried about pizza being delivered by drone a while ago. And here we are yeah. back to the American Imagine way. Imagine missiles being delivered by drones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know, back to AI controlled missiles. Like everywhere in the world these days, we've been talking a lot about AI recently. And, you know, we had our coverage about the U.S. trying to prohibit deep fakes from being used in elections. Even here at Bill Track 50, we've added AI generated bill summaries. Check them out if you haven't. Um, but... You know, the idea of AI-controlled nukes is really terrifying and honestly, to me, more terrifying than a human-controlled one. And I feel like, you know, back to our movie references earlier, Hollywood has really played up the fears with movies like Terminator and, you know, iRobot, War Games, all of this. But in reality, is AI truly as terrifying as it kind of seems in this Hollywood context? Well, it's it's a valid concern, Sarah. Um, Hollywood has dramatised it, uh, and obviously they're they're very exaggerated risks. But but the risks are there, and they're real. Um, AI misinterpreting data, making a wrong call, or or something like that, can lead to catastrophic consequences. The potential for for millions of deaths uh, and and sort of global annihilation really uh, is is too severe to to leave to an algorithm and, and not worry about. Speaking of kind of catastrophic scenarios, in the blog, you mentioned Annie Jacobson's book, Nuclear War, A Scenario. And 
There were some really interesting insights there. Do you have anything that you'd want to share from her research specifically? Sure. Uh, I mean, I should probably at this stage confess my uh, my fascination, from a morbid fascination with the end of the world. <laughs> um, I love anything to do with nuclear war, uh, zombie apocalypse, um, mm. you know, climate apocalypse, all of those kind of things. I don't know why, for some reason, I find it fascinating. It's very timely, really, in in terms of reading this bill, um, because the book is basically taking a sort of second by second analysis of what would happen in a particular particular war the scenario is that um North Korea launches a missile against against Washington DC <laughs> not, not very pleasant oh. uh, and it takes it through a sort of second by second uh scenario of what would happen uh and spoiler alert and like the world ends um <laughs> after about 10 minutes um because it's very it's within about an hour uh that was it the world was over um because wow. that's how long it takes so it, it was a, a a very interesting fascinating book but one that um you shouldn't read if you ever want to be able to sleep at night again um <laughs> <laughs> one, one, in, one in chilling detail from the book uh, is that the president uh, only has six minutes to decide whether to launch a retaliatory strike after the detection of an incoming oh ICBM, gosh. which is detected sort of instantly, really, uh, which is a staggeringly short time uh, to determine if it's a real uh, alert or if it's false. Um, uh, and then to actually make that decision to effectively end the world, um, the president has to do that. So um, you just need to think for a second, do you trust? Uh, either Joe Biden or um, Donald Trump uh, to make that call, you know, depending on which side of the political fence you stand on, you might have <laughs> concerns about one, one or both of those two mm -hmm. people actually making that call. Um, so an AI would be able to make the call dispassionately. Uh, it would be able to analyze vast amounts more data. It wouldn't get emotional about it. It wouldn't panic. Um, and so there's theoretically, it would be able to make a better decision um, because it can analyze a massive data in the blink of an eye and so on. Um, but there's also a risk that it would act too quickly for human intervention. And obviously it would be cutting out that, that sort of human are we sure we want to do this type question? Mm -hmm. The AI probably wouldn't ask that question. Six minutes. I, I can't even pick where I want to eat sometimes in six minutes. It seems like there's maybe a point here where we could use AI to grab information, but then, you know, we'd always kind of maybe want a human looking at it. And it just seems like yeah, exactly. this is a lot of stress and a monumental mm. decision. Like, there must have been near misses. Oh, yes, definitely. So the, the book details some of them. Uh, again, which is another sort of fascinating bit of the book because um, Jacobson is, has delved into all of these uh, newly declassified documents and so on, really skirting the edge of, of what you're actually allowed to talk about. Because obviously, this is all highly secret. Um, yeah. But one of the things that she dug up is in 1979, uh, a simulation tape was mistakenly inserted into, into a, a, a NORAD computer. It was a basic oh, yeah. computer at the time. Uh, and this computer started running this simulation uh, and analyzed uh, analysts actually believed at that time that it was a real Soviet attack. Um, oh and it was the middle of the night. There was one guy uh, on on duty at that time. And he's looking at his screens, all these missiles coming over. Um, and what he should have done was pick up the phone and call President Carter. Uh, but he didn't. Uh, he investigated further and quickly determined that it was actually a false alarm. And obviously he didn't need to sort of push the panic button. Um, and that human intervention that an AI might not have made uh, likely mm -hmm. prevented that disaster. There's so much missed here with, with AI of it is just data and it's not necessarily making a call it's evaluating an ending and you know evaluating a, a an answer i guess not an ending I mean, ending with this but ending of the world but you know, it may have not been prevented altogether if there was ai right well i mean it's a really crucial question isn't it the the ai might respond wrongly if a mistake mm -hmm. is made but would the ai have actually made that mistake in the first place because they do tend to be human errors it was a human being who put the wrong mm -hmm. tape into the computer um mm -hmm. so it might have avoided the issues but it might also not have had the intuition to actually double check um and it underscores the need for a human oversight and that final decision point to be made by a human being um and obviously in the case of america that that human being is the president of the united states who is the only person who mm -hmm. has the authority uh, and, and unless things go really bad, and there is no president anymore. Uh, the only person who has that authority to actually push the uh, metaphorical button, because as we all know, there isn't really actually a button, which is quite disappointing. <laughs> but the first issue is honestly to me just about how much we as a population, especially Congress, understands the impacts of AI. 
and what are the capabilities of our society and where it should be and what parts it should you know, help us with and other parts that it should stay very, very far away from. I don't know if our Congress has fully understood and embraced the lesson and the severity of not letting AI do too much within our society, especially when it comes to things like literally nuclear war. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the, the bill is a significant step. And then you have to say that it's it's probably the right thing to do. Um, it doesn't really address the, the root issue of nuclear weapons themselves. Um, um, uh, another sort of fascinating and terrifying bit of the book is that in 1983, um, the US military and civilian command ran uh, a highly classified set of war games known as the, the Proud Prophet War Games. Um, and what they did is they ran um, different nuclear scenarios. So every day, uh, all of these key senior people uh, within the administration turned up to work. They were presented with an envelope with a particular scenario in, uh, and they then acted as they would if that scenario was actually happening they called the same people they 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 made the same things happen um and each day was a completely different scenario um some quite big scenarios you know oh, there's a million missiles on the way others just like one rogue missile one rogue bomb or whatever um but the the interesting thing about the war games was that every single scenario ended in exactly the same way which was global annihilation mm. uh, regardless <laughs> of where it started sort of showing that okay. once you push that button there's no turning back there's no such thing as ds escalation um, mm -hmm. it, it always ends the same way and eerily of course um, the war games these war games in 1983 took place in exactly the same year that the movie war games was released uh, and the movie itself reached the same conclusion as the actual experts conducting this top secret military operation in the same year um, is that a coincidence is it art imitating life life imitating art uh, difficult to know. I mean, obviously, nuclear war was on everyone's minds back in 83. So uh, perhaps it is just a coincidence. Instead of just ensuring that it's a real human finger on that button, I feel like Congress should just focus on eliminating the nuclear threat altogether. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So while human oversight is crucial, the, the ultimate goal should be disarmament of some kind. And we, we've come so close in the past, uh, in various stages when, uh, particularly back in the days of the Soviet Union, um, the America and the Soviet Union came really close to agreeing um, to get rid of pretty much all of these bombs. Uh, and there were some successful ones. Obviously, the number of, of missiles in the world dramatically decreased, uh, particularly after uh, during the 90s. But it's going back up again now. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone's building new bombs, um, you know, and the, the threat seems to be getting sort of worse and worse again so it is time to really look at disarmament again and let's see if we can come up with some some new treaties uh, to actually address the main problem this has been an enlightening <laughs> discussion um thank you everybody for tuning in to our doomsday podcast this week <laughs> and don't forget that you can find our podcasts anywhere you find podcasts as well as our videos on tiktok and youtube um until next time i think i'll learn a lesson from matthew broderick and uh, go play a nice game of chess. Uh, always a safer choice. Thanks very much, Sarah. <laughs>